Uh, let's move to uh, Professor A. Professor A. Edward, 准备好了吗 ？OK. OK. A、uh, professor A is from uh, uh, from uh, from Zhongshan University uh, of Guangzhou, and he's an orthopedic orthopedic surgeon who specialized in especially in the cranial junction. Welcome, welcome, please. Can I see? Can I see the PPT? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Now, the topic of my speech is transoral atlantic axial reduction plate internal fixation for the treatment of reducible atlantic axial dislocation. And I am from Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hospital in Guangzhou. As we know, there are many classification of the atlantic axial dislocation.、Uh, according to the current time. The direction of dislocation, mechanism of dislocation, and the clinical. <clears throat> But the most important is the clinical <coughs> clinical classification. We divide it into three types: and reducible, irreducible, and fusional. And <coughs> if the reduction can be can be reduced,、uh, if the dislocation can be reduced by、uh, hyperextension or skull retraction, we call it reducible dislocation. And、uh, we will perform the posterior fixation according to、uh, C1 assimilated or not assimilated. We'll perform C0, C02 or C12 fixation. And if the dislocation is bony, is、uh, if the dislocation is built,、uh, with bony fusion, <coughs> we will perform the anterior anterior release or.、Uh, <coughs> Uh, if the、uh, we、we'll、call it fusional atlantic axial dislocation,、uh, if the fusion is only partial, we will dis disconnect the bony fusion and scar, and then perform the procedure pr procedure of the of the reduction and the fixation. But if the fusion is solid and wide, so it、uh, <coughs> the disconnection will become impossible. So we will、uh, perform. Uh, resect, uh, perform resecting the orthotomy process, and even co、uh, perform carpectomy of the upper part of the C2. But we will keep the lower end of C2.、Uh, the most、uh, popular and the most、uh, difficult is reducible、uh, atlantic axial dislocation, because the choice is、uh, is ma many. There are many choices for. For the, our surgeon, <clears throat> if we can't get a gas reduction even under the skull traction at a heavy weight, ensure operatively during the anesthesia, we call it irreducible atlantic axial dislocation.、And、currently, there are, although the, there exists a lot of treatment methods, many show the poor therapeutic effects,、uh, such as this case.、Uh, all uh, the the, the Children、uh, perform a decompression of the post posterior cranial fossa, but it's still dislocation. You can see the spinal cord is con、uh, compressed fr <coughs> from the ventral direction, and、uh, you can see the sigmoidal and the、uh, tons tonsillar hernia. And there are another、uh, method, such this case. Uh, the insufficient reduction of the lateral dislocation joint, which also be the cervical uh, <coughs> uh, fixation, but the <coughs> joint cannot be reduced thoroughly. So that we can see from the MR that the ventral compression still exists and the, the tonsillar hernia still exists. So the patient syndrome is still severe. And in modern modern days in China and in the world, there are there are two types of popular choice for the surgeon, spinal surgeon, surgeon or neurosurgeon. Surgeon.、Uh, uh, one is the one stage transoral release followed by posterior fixation.、Um, <coughs> the advantage、uh, is he can get satisfactory reduction and good surgical outcome. <coughs> 
And but the disadvantage is that there are two approaches from anterior and posterior approach. Uh, uh, <coughs> according to another author from German, uh, Kandura, <coughs> they said in the paper inspired in two, uh, 20, uh, 2000, 2000 uh, the cervical spine will be become extremely unstable after transfer release so that spinal cord injury uh, may occur potentially when turning over. So I agree with this point. <coughs> I think so. And another popular choice is posterior atelectic actual release followed by posterior internal fixation. And many surgeons uh, uh, nowadays adopt this method. Its advantage is it can get satisfactory reduction and can good sur surgical outcome too. But the question is, whether all the reduction, uh, re irreducible atlantic actual dislocation can be reduced thoroughly. Uh, <coughs> but um, does a better solution exist? So uh, the ideal <coughs> method should include a less trauma by only one approach. Uh, it uh, has service, a sufficient potential called decompre uh, decompression of the uh, spinal cord and free of dense resection. So it can uh, <clears throat> decrease the, the risk of the operation. So we designed the uh, top operation. That means transoral atlantic re uh, actual reduction plate. This is the photo of during, uh, during the operation. It's top four, the fourth generation of top. Uh, the, re we, uh, the research started in 1999. Uh, we performed the first operation of top one uh, on <coughs> April 20, 2003. Other, uh, we published the first paper in 2005 in China and 2005 in Spain. <coughs> and the top operation was frequently performed by the author in the top hospitals in China over more than 20 provinces every year. So far, Mm, more than 1,000 cases of top operation were completed. And uh, in our department, we performed about 160 to 70 upper cervical spine operations every year. <coughs> now I will re uh, introduce the reduction process. Hmm? It's a flash. This is the normal spinal cord and the telangiectasia joint. This is dislocation, and the spinal cord is compressed. And first, we will uh, lose the joint with burr or uh, uh, curette, and then place the, the plate with two C1 screw in the lateral mass of C1, and then the plate uh, together with the C1 will become a hole. Then we we'll place another C2 screw into the C into the axis vertebrae. Then C2 C2 and the screw with another hole. And we place the, the reductor in the reductor. Uh, hold the plate and the screw. Then and uh, upward and forward to get the fully. Uh, Re <coughs> fully reduction. After that, we will place the two, two C2 uh, screw into the uh, vertebrae or reverse particle screw. And take out the reductor and the screw and the autogenous bone fu fusion. Okay, it's the, <coughs> the whole procedure. Uh, I will introduce the history at the top. The, this is the, the, gener, the, uh, the first generation of top called the top one. It's a flat, and we performed this, uh, the first uh, operation in 2004. At the right side is the reductor. <coughs> it's the first case of our, our, <coughs> our unit. You can see uh, the C1 and C2 from the transoral approach, we place the plate with C1 and C2 vertebral screw. But we change this <coughs> tragedy and change our plate. And the, the second gener generation, you can see the C2 vertebrae, vertebrae, uh, C2 
the C2 screw uh, changed to bicortical screw because they found that in the uh, T type one, some uh, some cases uh, have a re-dislocation. So we found that the C2 screw is more important. So we, we change it to bicortical screw. And after that, we, we found it's still not, not strong enough. So we changed to the top three with uh, the C2, C2 re reverse, re reverse particle screw. And uh, the, this is top four. You can see that we uh, add the two, two small screw in the uh, C2 vertebrae. That means after we get the thorough reduction, we will place the two small screw first. Then the C2, C2 uh, uh, reverse particle screw, we can handle it through the narrow, narrow space uh, more easily. Uh, this this uh, photo shows the entry, entry direction of C2 uh, reverse particle screw. And this is top four. Uh, <coughs> operation uh, photo and the fluoroscopy photo. I will int introduce some type typical case. The first case is congenital bacillus invagination. We perform a, 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 a revised surgery. Uh, this is a, a patient with a, a BI uh, with the po uh, posterior surgery. But uh, after the uh, operation, the spinal cord compression still is. So we uh, perform the transoral top three operation. We can see that uh, the plate is the anterior surface of C12. And uh, from the CT scan, we can see that the hot process is pulled out uh, from the, <coughs> the foramen magnum. It's obviously. It's the C1 lateral screw and the C2 reverse reverse particle screw. It's the bilateral. Control with the pre-op MR, we can see that uh, the spinal cord is decompressed thoroughly and the syringe line media, syringe line media is shrinked uh, immediately after the operation. And the, the C cervical medullar angle uh, recovered to normal. This is case two. Uh, <coughs> uh, this is a case of a reducible atlant actual dislocation. You can see that the anterior arch of C1 dropped to the anterior surface of C2. Uh, under the dyna <coughs> dynamic view, we can see that this dislocation is rigid. And from the 3D CT scan, we can see that uh, it's dropped to the anterior, uh, C1 has dropped to the anterior surface of C2, and uh, <coughs> the other thought uh, had into the foramen magnum. And uh, the bilateral facade, you can see that uh, the <coughs> it had dropped to the anterior surface of C C2. So I think such a, this case is difficult it is difficult to perform the operation from the posterior approach uh, because the uh, anterior facet is vertical and so it is difficult from, <coughs> from posterior. Uh, from the MRI, we can see that the uh, eventual cord compression is obvious and with the uh, cherry one <laughs> malformation. So we give the patient the top three operation uh, compared with the pre-op X-ray, you can see that the C1 has been pulled upward to its normal place. And compared with the pre-op CT, pre CT scan, we can see that the auditory process had been put out from the foramen magnum. And the MR showed that this compression uh, the, uh, has started the uh, decompression of the spinal cord and as the as the my ear is ringed. So I will show the advantage of top. It's uh, it's only uh, has only single uh, transoral approach. 
with less trauma and more effective. And it is free of dense re resection uh, <clears throat> because the reduction will lead to, uh, thorough reduction will lead to thorough decompression. So I, we think that the decompression of the bone uh, and even other <coughs> scars will be ne unnec unnecessary. And so will lead to the lower risk. And this operation uh, uh, is uh, transfer release, reduction, fixation, and fusion. And the, the whole whole procedure can be completed by only by one approach. So it <coughs> it's, it's better. Uh, on the other hand, it's a cosmetic incision because the, from the transoral approach, the incision is uh, just uh, in the oral cavity. It can it is invisible, so it will be free of scar at posterior skin, <coughs> especially in some. Some girl ladies, uh, it, 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 it's very good for them. And uh, this this third, uh, this operation uh, means uh, intervertebral uh, intervertebral fusion, uh, including tri triple joint arthrolysis uh, with bilateral Atlantic joint joints and uh, the Atlantic dense joint. So it will lead to a higher fusion rate, I think. Just as the uh, lumbar spine fusion, <coughs> and uh, uh, many many surgeons will uh, will pay attention to the complications for top, so we'll <coughs> introduce them. Uh, the first and the most important thing is the infection rate, because many many surgeons uh, think that it's a dangerous pro approach for the <coughs> spinal surgery, and it's because it has high infection rate. But in our unit, <coughs> it's decreasing gradually. In recent uh, 10 years, it has, de has de uh, decreased to decrease to 1%. Uh, so if you have many <coughs> uh, strategies for to, uh, to decrease, decrease the infection, <coughs> it uh, can be controlled. And uh, another is that from the transoral approach, if you uh, if uh, the CSF leakage is more important, so every <coughs> surgeon must pay attention to it. It will if the CSF if CSF leakage happens, it lead to a lead to a very dangerous, very dangerous. And uh, because the implants is beneath the oral uh, mucosa, many pe people think, uh, do we have do we have have foreign body sensation, or uh, it will lead an uh, increasing infa infection rate? Uh, but the <coughs> answer is no. And uh, another uh, another complication is Atlanta actual dislocation in the top one and top two because the screw is placed in the vertebrae so there are some cases uh, ha have the this kind of dislocation but after we place the screw in into the pedic uh, pedicle uh, reverse uh, we call it reverse pedicle screw of c2 uh, this kind this kind of dislocation will not be uh, observed again why because uh, the reducible irreducible dislocation after uh, after we uh, have reduced it, it have the force of uh, Siva have the force to re dislocate again. So the C two C two screw will be very important, but in top one and two, it's uh, uh, by, uh, only in the vertebrae the screw is relatively short. So it is not strong enough to hold the, the plate and to hold the to keep the the uh, reduction. Uh, after after uh, the C two uh, reverse pedicle screw was used, it's more strong enough, just like posterior C two pedicle screw. So this kind of dislocation will never be seen again. And uh, the fourth uh, complication. Is injury of the vertebral artery. <laughs> Why? Uh, because when we use the top three or top four, 
we will use the transorder reverse transparticle screw. So if the <coughs> the screw leave it, uh, it will uh, into the uh, vertebral artery hole, <coughs> so it will injure 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 the, the, the artery. But this kind of completion only only occurred in uh, one case, another surgeon in our unit. And because every surgeon will be pay very attention, pay more attention to this complication, and we will <coughs> like to uh, we will like to place the the screw uh, even in the media, immediately. It's safely than it safely than the laterally, and <coughs> so the injury of the vertebral artery is very 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 little. Another kind of complication is dizziness. This is because a compression of a dominant vertebral artery. As uh, from our experience, it will recall in, uh, in about one or two one or two weeks. <coughs> and uh, the spinal cord injury is it never happened in our you know it, unit. Uh, now it's the take home message. The top operation is, I think, top operation is suitable and effective surgical method when the posterior structure, structure of C1 and C2 exists variation without the condition of screw placement. And revised top operation can be effective method, is a method for the invalid or failed posterior upper cervical surgery. If you can do the posterior surgery, you have another choice from the transoral approach. So top will be another good choice. And the top operation is a good surgical method to treat bacillar invagination, especially for the patients combined with, combined with C1 through dislocation and eventually called compression. Uh, our experience, our experience proved that it's really, it's, it's, it's really a good method to show <coughs> BI. And, uh, and the top operation showed good outcome for the treatment of the patient with reducible atlantic shoe dislocation with the one stage procedure, including anterior release, decompression, reduction, and fixation. So I think uh, this is uh, another choice for our surgeon uh, for the patient with uh, BI and uh, IAAD. <laughs> uh, if you uh, familiar with the transfer approach, uh, which will be, uh, be uh, another choice. I think it's uh, it's good. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, any question? Uh, Professor, uh, yeah. Uh, Doctor Jian, please come on. Uh, uh, Professor A. Uh, how to quit the, uh, the... This is a very amazing technique. Uh, but I'd like to know, uh, according to you, is it uh, difficult to learn this technique? Because I, as I know, uh, besides your besides in your de department, uh, there are no many doctors can uh, can perform this type of a surgery. Mm. According to you, I mean, the, the, the learning curve, uh, your experience yeah. of the learning curve. Yeah. Uh, how to quit the the BPT? Uh, Professor, I my question. I see. Uh, uh, yeah. the the trans transoral transoral approach is familiar with the neurosurgeon surgeon first, but uh, in our unit we start uh, we start this surgery from from this transoral surgery from nineteen uh, eighteen. 80, 1980s, uh, but we performed the, the top surgery from uh, the 2003, 2004. But I think many surgeons, many neurosurgeons, don't, um, or even the spinal surgeon, don't are familiar with the, the anterior uh, fix, fixation. So we have uh, <coughs> we have introduced our technique all over the all over China and uh, and uh, all kinds of meetings. So <coughs> so. Uh, many surgeons have asked us to 
as such, they want they want to perform this uh, operation. If you you are interested, uh, if anyone interested this operation, we interest introduce the, the plate uh, to you. But I don't think it's a very difficult technique because uh, uh, in the former years the the plate uh, is not be uh, <clears throat> in, introduced to the the uh, factory. So uh, uh, how to say? It? <laughs> so uh, we go we we go we we were produced with the we go corporation. If you, if anyone you, uh, have interest, uh, interesting with it, it can be uh, provided to you with view. Okay. How many, uh, how many cases do you perform each year? Uh, Using this our unit, about one hundred and sixty cases, and this you, is you, uh, 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 this is upper spine, upper cervical spine surgery, uh -huh. and the top surgery about sixty to seventy. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. I have one question. Okay. Um, very interesting technique, actually. I, I enjoy that. Uh, but um, it looks like it's a technically demanding technique. Uh, you have done almost seventy surgeries. You said. Uh, how do you achieve a, a reduction uh, after releasing? You you place the traction of the of the head, or what? How do you make the reduction from ventral? You don't place any any spacer inside the uh, joint, atlantoaxial joint, don't you? Okay. Uh, we after the release of the joints. Uh, we will place the plate onto the surface of C1 with two screws. Then uh, with uh, another uh, screw uh, onto the surface of C C2. So we uh, when we use the Atlanta actual reductor to place the, the two arms uh, on the up uh, up arm uh, uh, hold the, the plate, and the lower arm will hold the screw of C2. Then we use the uh, tractor, we will uh, uh, up, uh, uh, place the, we will lift the, <coughs> the plate uh, upward and forward, then we will get the thorough uh, reduction. And uh, then we will, uh, then we will place uh, another question. What? Everything you do from, uh, from the mud. From the opening of the oral cavity. Ah. Actually, uh, I have used a Clivus uh, C2 plate uh, years before for uh, in in a tumor case, uh, but I couldn't manage a screwdriver and plate together. The, I, I must congratulate you that, that you make uh, all the surgery from a two centimeters opening, mostly, or three sometimes. Uh, and you you place one plate holder, uh, screwdriver, and also uh, the reductor from from the opening of the mat. Do you? Uh, Am I right? Uh, yes, you're right. And we, uh, another question you have asked me is that the about the bone uh, bone fusion. Uh, uh, <coughs> we will play uh, in top one and top two. I uh, will uh, after the uh, the uh, reduction, we will place the the iliac graft uh, into the <coughs> the lateral atlantic space, atlantic joint space, and. Uh, and nowadays, okay. I always play the two two uh, graft graft uh, shot and uh, first and uh, and then place the uh, then place the reductor for the for, for the 
for okay. the uh, uh, this uh, okay. uh, yes, okay. probably I missed the beginning uh, of your talk. Probably okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, now you can. Yes, I have Thank a you, Professor. Uh, I have a question. Uh, in the excellent techniques. I want to know um, how do you locate the exact positions of the uh, C two particle screw? Uh, you mentioned that you use the reverse reverse C two particle screw. We know that uh, in this condition, there are a lot of high radiant whatever arteries. Uh, usually, the C2 particles are very short. Uh, how you locate your exact location of your uh, reverse? Okay. I, I know, I know. Uh, so the difficult part is the C2 reverse uh, particle screw uh, because from the big uh, vertebrae to a small particle is relatively difficult. Uh, I will uh, <coughs> use a, a, a 3D model first, and then the try the tra tra trajectory uh, of the uh, use a needle to try it. Uh, I will know the exactly the trajectory of our uh, of my screw during the operation. So I uh, bring the model and the needle the, the tra trajectory to the oper operation or operation room. Uh, then we, I uh, know that, and uh, you, during the the real op, uh, real operation, I will use the uh, fluoroscopy. Uh, first, uh, if the screw uh, the the direction is uh, 25, 25 degrees uh, uh, twenty five degrees uh, lateral and uh, 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 the. <laughs> Uh, 20, 23 lateral. Uh, use the fluoroscopy. We can see if when uh, when we end the, uh, the when we go to the post wall, it, it still can entry. So I still can entry the bony uh, the bone. It, sh it means that you are in the particle. If you are stopped, if you it stopped. Is the cortical is the has the feeling of cortical uh, cortex that means that it's medially or laterally, so it, it can be stopped. It, it will be difficult. You must uh, stop and only can uh, by by cortical uh, screw only pen, uh, penetrated just a little, just a little, so it will be stopped. Uh, if you have a lot of screw. Uh, experience will know how what uh, what kinds of screw is just uh, suitable for for the operation, and the better better method is that you have an O arm you can you can use it in the during the during the the surgery you will know that exactly the tra uh, trajectory is suitable. Okay, okay, thank you. And because uh, later I think uh, uh, Professor Feng will also talk about the. Uh, the relative topic. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, Professor A again.